Well, if that didn't get you ready for worship, I don't know what will. Give you a little joy at the beginning of our worship service, which is a joy to worship with you. Welcome to our 1230 service this October 18th in 2020. And our um, bulletins are available online. And we will stay for a few minutes afterwards for sort of informal uh, chit chat. And during the service, if you would like to um, uh, write a comment for prayer, please do. And, um, or a question for conversation at the end of the service, please do that as well. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. God, God is, is with, with us. us. Here, Here we, we find, find new life. life. Let us worship God. us to reflect and share the goodness that surrounds us. Help us to win justice for poor and rich alike and bring trust and friendship to all our different races through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people, he said. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, and I, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, 
I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Praise and glory to God. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to this test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Word. Will you please pray with me? God of mercy, pain, joy, and glory, guide our hearts and minds to hear the good news in the midst of everlasting change and uncertainty. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And good afternoon. It is so good to be back with you today. Thank you all for praying for my family. My mom is now home resting after her surgery. And I am grateful for all of your messages, emails, phone calls, and most especially for your prayers. God has quite the sense of humor. And if you had any doubt about this, today's message for me may just change your mind. You may not know this about me, but conversations around politics can make me very nervous. And having to address this gospel out of the lectionary that cycles every three years a few days after early voting has started, and a few weeks away from election day, God has a sense of humor. And I tried to run away from doing this, right? I tried to really hard. I said, well, let's look at the Old Testament. Well, everyone agrees that that reading is just a little awkward. It's an interesting interaction between Moses and God, and I think that it just reflects the kind of relationships that we sometimes have with our friends and those people that we love. So here I was, trying to find this gospel passage in the other gospels to kind of help me get a better sense of how to interpret these few verses. I wasn't very successful because this particular part of the story is only found here and in the gospel of Mark. God has a sense of humor. We can run, but we can't hide from God meaning to what God 
is saying to us today, we need to take a closer look at what was currently happening when all of this took place. The author includes a few characters. We see the Pharisees and the Herodians, two groups who are completely different. Herodians are believed to have been followers of Herod, which would therefore be in conflict with what the Pharisees But they do have one thing in common. They're not fans of Jesus. The Pharisees sent their disciples along with the Herodians. So this means and tells us, the readers, that both of these groups knew exactly what they wanted to do. They had thought this through. They were convinced that Jesus would fall for their trap. They refer to Jesus as teacher in both Gospels, sarcastically saying, you are sincere, which is a fact. Teach the way of God, a fact. But do these two groups of people believe the, these words? No. They want Jesus to answer because whether an answer of yes or of no, Jesus would be either arrested or killed. Ah, but here comes the climax in the story. Show me the coin used for the tax. They brought Jesus the coin. Pharisees and Herodians had this in their possession. And then Jesus' eloquent and just right response and what most of us hear. Give therefore to the emperor, emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Jesus used this as a teachable moment there was a kingdom of Herod, there was a kingdom of Rome, and then there's a kingdom of God that is different and for all. And it is important to get this right. I think that we can't separate this passage from the whole story. Some may say that Jesus' response here is one that calls for a separation between religions and politics. Perhaps to say that what God is calling for it for is an allegiance to a government, an allegiance that is in question. But I think that this is why it is so important to read the whole story. Jesus' life wouldn't support that idea. This would imply that Jesus was not political, that Jesus didn't speak for justice, which is not the case. Jesus is political. Jesus' death was a political execution. Jesus was crucified for political reasons. And Jesus' response is motivated by his faith. Jesus believed that the kingdom of God should be and would be available to all. Now, today, our decisions are the same, including our political ones. Whatever religion, whatever your faith, this guides the de decisions we make. And when Jesus says, to God the things that are God's, those of us who believe in this kingdom of God know that that includes us. All of me, all of you, we belong to God. This also reflects and tells us what being in a relationship with God is about. It's not forced. We are invited into relationship. We decide if we will accept the salvation offered to us. And Jesus, with his words, is claiming who God is for. And Jesus' words match Jesus' actions. Jesus walked with all, taught to all. This passage is reminding us that we are made in the image of God. That because we are made in the image and likeness of God, we learn from Jesus' example. So, as we start preparing for the upcoming elections in this country, let us remember how political Jesus was 
how the desire to make God's kingdom for all guided his actions, and ask ourselves where we fit in that picture and in this story. And as I stand here, hands sweating, I am reminded who I belong to. I am reminded that difficult conversations are needed today, that political conversations may make me uncomfortable, but the injustices of the world have become unbearable, that we can't separate faith from our political decisions, that we can engage in our civic duties and responsibilities and also question all of these different systems. That we can engage in dialogue with others who do not think like we do. That we can empathize with others. That we can try to understand and truly feel the pain of others and their experiences. That we can ask the difficult questions. That we can speak out against society's treatment of oppressed groups of people. We can commit to listening to the anger in the voices of brown, black, indigenous, and all people of color. Listening like Jesus did to Lazarus' sisters after his death. That we can welcome the stranger because we have the examples of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who were strangers all of their lives. To listen when we tell you that these difficult conversations matter. And that sometimes we will be wrong. That today, even American theologian Reynold Niebuhr, who I read a lot about in seminary and who I know has contributed a lot to the way we learn today, might have not known exactly what his and be sustained by a robust faith that history will gradually fulfill the logic of justice. It's 2020. That you and I can no longer stay silent. That we cannot say that diversity and representation matter when our fill in the blanks, our friends, our families, schools, churches, courts, communities have no people of color represented, or when we confuse diversity and representation with tokenism. Because as theologian James Cone tells us, there is no justice without power, and there is no power with one, two, or even three tokens. You cannot say my life matters, but not have the uncomfortable conversation about illegal immigration and the role it plays in my family. And I cannot say that I support my black siblings just because I have a black friend. That I cannot say I'm not racist if I'm not doing the work of anti-racism, taking an active role. That I cannot love my neighbor and not speak out against systems that seek to harm them. And friends, this is scary. This is hard work. And doing this while in isolation, during these times of fear and uncertainty, I don't have the answer. And I don't think there's an easy answer. But I know that Jesus is our example. That Jesus, in Jesus, we have an example of how our faith can guide and shift 
not only our stories, don't always get it right. That yes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but what we give God, but that we give God what is God's. And if you ever wonder who belongs to God, know that it is you, that it is me, that you are God's and you are made in God's image. And we can together follow Jesus' example of loving and welcoming all into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. abundance of the earth. Give us and all people's grace to live in harmony with your creation, wisdom, and generosity in our use of its bounty. Let us pray for peace and shared prosperity and for the end of systemic racism that divides us. We pray for leaders to serve the common good. Give wisdom to those who have responsibility and authority in every land that we may share with justice the resources of the world and work together in trust.
disciples' prayer for the Most Reverend Michael Curry and the Episcopal Church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer for All Saints Stafford, Calvary Richmond, Christ Church, Church Eagle Lake, and Christ Church Matagorda. In the ministry cycle of prayer for Rick Powell and the sound operators, we give thanks for the good news of salvation for all people. Strengthen us for our work in the world. Empower your church to proclaim the gospel in service, word, and sacrament. Unite in the truth all who confess your name, that we may live together in love to your glory. Let us pray for ourselves and our community. We give thanks for the fellowship of the communities in which we live and work, especially Trinity Church. We pray for our bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Hector, Jeff, and Kay, our bishops, for Hannah, Luz, and Henry, our clergy. We commend to your keeping ourselves and each other, our families, those with whom we work and learn, our neighbors and our friends. Enable us by your spirit to live in love for you and for one another. especially for those we now name. Richard, Margaret, Catalina, Livia, Betty, Dina, Emily, June, Lori. Doug, Sharon, Stan, the Oliver family, Charles, and Larry. Let us give thanks for the faith of the departed, especially Scott Peavy, Elijah, Beard, Elijah E. Bearden, and all who have perished by contracting the coronavirus. Grant that we, with all your saints, may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of your kingdom. We give you thanks for your servants in every age, especially for these who are celebrating their birthdays. John, Suzanne, Harrison, Evan, and Brian. desires. 
We ask you to accept our thanksgivings, to guide our ways, and to receive our praise. O oh God, hear the prayers of your people. Please make sure to include your petitions, praises, or thanksgiving, either in the comment section, aloud, or in silence. are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your Good healing, healing merciful, merciful God. God. Give, Give us, us true repentance. repentance. Some, some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, who breaks down the walls that divide. The peace of God be always with you. Praise to Christ, who makes us one. Trinity Episcopal Church in Midtown. You can go to trinitymidtown.org at the giving tab or look in your bulletin for ways to do that.
The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We Lord, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed, it is our joy and our salvation. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with people of every nation, tribe, and language, with the whole church on earth and in heaven, joyfully we give you thanks and say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and thanksgiving to you, holy God. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, to remember me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the sacrament of the suffering and death of your Son, we now celebrate the wonder of your grace and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come in glory. glory. Redeemer God, rich in mercy, infinite in goodness, we were far off until you brought us near and our hands are empty until you fill them. As we eat this bread and drink this wine through the power of your Holy Spirit, Feed us with your heavenly food, renew us in your service, unite us in Christ, and bring us to your everlasting kingdom. From you and through you and for you are all things. To you be the glory forever. <laughs> sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant, Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
together. Praise to God who makes us one people. Blessed be God who has forgiven our sin. Praise to God who gives hope and freedom. Blessed be God whose word is proclaimed. Praise to God who is revealed as love. Blessed be God who alone has called us. Therefore we offer all that we are and all that we shall become. Accept, O oh God, our sacrifice of praise. Accept our thanks for all you have done. Send us now into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to be loved and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you always. Amen.
too. that um, is part of our stewardship um, ministry. And so um, we want you to, you know, if you can't watch it when we premiere it on November 6th, you can watch it later. Also, um, the, you know, there'll be light moments and there'll be deep moments as well. And what the, the timing for it, um, we wanted to bring uh, all of us together after the election for some, some, some fun and for connection and just a celebration of our community. Um, again, not every, not every presentation will be fun, um, but it will be part of sharing the God-given task that we have. And so eclectic and wonderful community uh, together and um, get a little respite from um, the collective trauma we're all going through right now. <laughs> so, um, so again, November 6th at, um, at 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be a watch party. Uh, Facebook and YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Um, and so uh, there's lots of other things going on, so I just want to make keep that out in your mind. And um, Hub Theology has been going strong for a year uh, since uh, its fearless leader, Rich, left to become rector, and we thank Ron for that and all that participated, but they're going to take a little break, so we won't have Pub Theology for three weeks, um, so just check on our announcements um, about when that is going to come again. It's been a lot of fun to have a whole range of questions to talk about. And we also want to invite folks to participate in our healing service, which is a service of beautiful prayers for each other, liturgy, uh, scripture, and Lucy and I um, share the leadership of that. So we go back and forth, um, depending on our, our, our work schedules, really. Um, and so you never know which one of us you're going to get, but either one is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... So um, we really want that to grow a little bit more. Um, people share how they would like to be prayed for as well, and then we all pray for um, that person individually. It could be for yourself or for other things in the world or friends or family. And it's really moving and um, soul nourishing. So um, we want uh, to bring that to your attention. And we've been trying to put Zoom links in different places. If there's some place that you go to to look to find out how to participate in Trinity events and it's not there, please email us and let us know um, what would be helpful because we want to make everything as accessible as possible. I do want to say, uh, last week I got a, a text from one of our um, <laughs> uh, concerned for, uh, uh, parishioners and um, thinking that maybe Ernesto um, 
was in was, danger. Was in danger <laughs> from 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 um, April's powerful and wonderful singing, and yet you see farthest away. I think the angle of the camera makes him seem closer, but he is actually the farthest away and the safe, the very safe. Right? Would you say so, Ernesto? I would yes. I'm in touch with his mom every week. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Facebook. We communicate every week. <laughs> and that's his mom is making sure that April keeps him safe. So we are, I, I, I love it. I really love it that people are concerned for those of us here. And I think that is just a sign of our community being wonderful. And but I, I did review and it, it does it, the, the, just the being on video makes her nice look a little closer than he is. So he's, we would never put anyone in danger. Now because of just the way the camera is set up, in order to get all of us on the screen, it has to kind of modify itself. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of why it looks that way. But, um, and other few things, if you have your weekly window, I mean your bulletin, the weekly window is included on page 14 and 15 actually. And we have just a lot of things coming up. We just had the Episcopal Way membership class yesterday. We have a baptism class coming up next Saturday at 10. So if you would like to be baptized and you have not reached out, please do so. We are going to do our class over Zoom, so you still have time. Uh, we have our blood drive already set for the 29th, and it's from 1.30 to 5. But I have seen a few people already signed up. So if, if you are interested, Please make sure you follow the link on, on the weekly window. It's also on our website. It's also on the calendar on our website. It's usually on the email blast that we send as well. So there's a few of you that have already done that. And if you uh, donated last time, then you should have gotten an email to invite you again. We have the election day coming up where we're going to need some volunteers and just a lot of different opportunities to stay connected with us. We are trying to include more Zoom links and trying to just have that available and making sure that it's accessible to everyone. And um, so if you're interested in Sunday Meditations group, still meeting at 9.30 every Sunday, Parenting with Grace, our youth group is also still meeting, and our healing service, like Hannah mentioned, is every Wednesday. It is, I think, very uh, nourishing even just to be there and, and share and, and have others. We like it. We yeah, like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and it is very intimate, which I think is also very special. We are able to just be with each other in silence and, and, and prayer as well. So if you're interested, please be sure to let us know. There's a Zoom link for that as well. And I'm trying to see what else is, is coming um, up. No, November 1st is um, actually All Saints Sunday. And we do combine All Saints and All Souls celebration here. So we commemorate our dearly departed. And, um, and for All Saints Sunday, that includes anyone that you want to include. We will include uh, people who we know uh, and are connected, of, uh, connected with um, that are close to our community. Um, burials that we have done, funerals that we have done. Um, people who we have prayed for. But if there's someone that wouldn't have been prayed for in the prayers of the people uh, who are, whose uh, funeral did not happen here in the last year, or even what, just someone that has been um, gone um, for a while and you would like to include that name, please go ahead and do so. Email Pat Laubach at volunteer at trinitymidtown.org volunteer at trinity.org and you can send your name. So normally at our annual meeting we have a meditative time of commemoration for all those who have passed in the last year and that is limited. That's at our annual meeting in January. But for All Saints Sunday with the combined All Souls celebration we um, uh, invite 
at you to send in names of whoever you would like. Um, so, um, and who do we send them to? Hmm? Who do we send them to? Send them to Pat Laubach at volunteer at trinitymidtown.org by next Sunday. By next Sunday. So um, we can get them in to our thing. Um, can I? Go and ahead. thank you, Mary Mitatucci. Thank you, guys. You love the music. Thanks. <laughs> There's someone asking also about um, opening churches now that Governor Abbott has gone up with the percentage of attendance. I think for us, we have, we're have we going kind of with what the diocese is also doing and kind of being careful and aware of, of uh, when we would be opening up. I know that the reopening committee has met and is thinking of other maybe perhaps doing something outside so we are trying and looking into and listening to what others are saying as well mm -hmm. so the benchmarks for us that were initially set have never changed um, and we've, they've not been met um, so uh, the the county in terms of meeting in person so the county um, Harris County, Houston, um, is still in uh, red, um, as far as I know, unless that's changed. And, and so that's not good. But um, we're right on the line of getting to that 5% number, which is the number we're looking for, that 5% or less. Or less, or less. yes, 5% or less. So, um, that's good, and it has been declining, but it's got to stay at that 5% or less for 14 days to be absolutely safe, and we want to be absolutely safe with your, um, with your lives. And um, so, so we have been discussing having a Sunday um, service at 8 a.m. outside, uh, in November, I think we're going to start with some of the leadership. So Your opinion to us about what you think we should do, we welcome that. So you can email me or Amy um, or Colin um, or Pat or Ann or John, if you know them, that are all on the reopening committee. Um, um, so we're being very cautious, and we're it's 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 a temptation, I think, to say, oh, it's been so long, and we want to just go ahead. But there are other things that are opening up, like the school are going in person, and that also increases the risk. Some of them are going, some people are going in person. So, you know, we want to um, continue to be able to say that no one's gotten sick because they've gone to Trinity Episcopal Church. And we are gonna, we're looking at some um, ideas for the special services coming up. And our building is an old historic building. Our, uh, don't have as much outside um, air coming in as maybe some other buildings. So we're looking at every minute safety issue. Um, but we're ready too. We would like to, we would like to see you all in some way, shape, or form. Um, but when we gather together, we also have to, the music has to go down because it has to be shorter time periods. So there's a give and take there, and right now, um, we like to give. <laughs> we like to like up in the, the band with us. Um, so I just think you all might think this is funny. I got a text from my son uh, saying he was initiated to a fraternity last night and didn't get arrested. So that was good. Anyway. He does good. He does good. <laughs> that is one of the funniest texts I've ever gotten. That is funny. <laughs> um, and a 
good thing. <laughs> Couple other minutes for. Yeah, about a, or about a minute. Okay, it's 1.44. Nobody knows. Thank you. Thank you. What? There's a Just prayers for, for the teachers and the kids. Yes. yes. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, we try to see those who have chosen go back into the school and others have been We've already. and have been already in person. So God bless you and keep you and thank you for yes. being with us. Thank have you. a blessed week. Bye-bye.